Well, as we start out this morning, for those who um, didn't hear earlier, are you all hearing me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, we, yeah, uh, our organist, our, uh, Bob Gerard, our music director, has not been able to play for us for so many months. And so we're really pleased that he, he was able to get his computer up in the living room with his piano. And so um, it's not, it's not going to, it's through Zoom, so it's not going to be quite as beautiful as the organ in church, but it's going to be um, full of the Spirit of God, and so we're so glad that Bob's going to offer us a prelude this morning. So, uh, I'm going to play um, Come Sunday, which is 728 in the hymn book, if you have it. But this is one that we used to sing quite a bit, and um, our choir member, Joan Burns, used to love singing this as a solo. We haven't done it, heard it for a few years, so I thought I'd play that. so much, Bob. It's so great to hear your, uh, your playing again. So welcome, everyone. Welcome to, welcome to worship at First and Summerfield United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Vicki. Um, just a few logistical things. Um, one is that we are so glad to have each one of you with us this morning, community um, and feeling a sense of community. Uh, is so precious in these days. Um, and uh, we would love to hear from you if you're not on our email list, um, if, if you're not receiving information about us, uh, what we do during the week and updates on any changes that might happen with worship, um, we do invite you to uh, email us at fsumcworship at gmail.com. And we would love to stay in touch with you and hear from you. Um, I also just want to let everyone know that today is Communion Sunday, and so we invite you to have something like bread with you, um, if you're able to, and something like juice or wine um, with you, and we will bless these elements that we have at home uh, and, and partake in communion together. And if you don't, if you're not able to get that stuff together today, that is also just fine. Um, 
And finally, next week will be a little bit different. Um, our, our worship team and I have been very uh, busy adjusting to all of this, um, the newness of how to do worship in this time. And so our bishop is asking that all of our um, worship teams and pastors take a break next weekend. And to, to support us in doing that, they're providing a, a worship service for us. And so we will gather just like this um, next week. Uh, and our host will be our wonderful, one of our wonderful student leaders, Abby Langford, and she will lead this community in worship next week. Um, we will ha have uh, the conference worship will be the substance of worship, but we'll also have our own joys and concerns and coffee hour and everything. So it will feel um, a little different, but also um, hopefully quite familiar. And you'll see the same elements of, of community that are so important to everyone next week. Um, so I think that's it with the uh, announcements. And we usually start our worship uh, with just a moment of intentional silence. So we'll just take a time to bring our whole selves, our week, our cares, our joys into this space, into this um, community, into this loving body of souls and before God. So let us take a moment of silent meditation. Amen. I will invite Kara and Lenny to lead us and maybe a little bit of a zebra might jump in um, to lead us in our call to worship this morning. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. Let the waters be gathered. Let the earth put forth vegetation. Let the earth bring forth creatures. Let us make humanity in our image. On this day, may God say, let there be justice. Let the vulnerable find safety. Let communities put forth courage. Let the people bring forth a revolution of love. Let us seek the divine image within every soul. Amen. Thank you. Um, my husband and I are going to attempt to lead us in um, Give Me Jesus, our first hymn. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I Jesus, give me Jesus. 
Join with me in our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment of silent confession. Hear this good news, beloveds, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Kimmy will lead us in our prayer song, Through It All. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon God's word. Thanks, Kimmy. Now, Abby and Bill will lead us in our reading of Genesis 1, 1 to uh, chapter 2, verse 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness, God called the light day and the darkness God called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together God called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it, 
and God said that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and be responsible for it. And watch over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done. And God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Abby. Let's, uh, let's pray. Holy One, we give you thanks for this time together. We give you thanks for your creation and for your creative spirit. We uh, ask that you would be wholly present to us today and that we might be wholly present to you. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of every heart would be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let me tell you a very old story today. It goes like this. When the heavens above did not yet exist and the earth beneath had not yet come into being, all that was were deep primordial waters. The deep primordial waters that became the mother of all the gods was known 
as Tiamat. This is how the world began. Tiamat got really annoyed with her kids. And they all got into a big fight. And her children decided that Tiamat had become out of control, completely chaotic. And so one of her children, the greatest of the gods, Marduk, stepped up to stop her. And as Marduk came to battle his primordial mother, the deep waters of chaos, he released an evil wind into her face. And I'll skip over the very graphically violent details, but the basic gist is she was defeated. And then her precious offspring, Marduk, stood triumphantly atop his primordial mother's dead corpse. And then the story says, he split Tiamat's body into two pieces like a clamshell. And one half of her body he set up and stretched out as the heavens or the firmament to hold back her primordial waters from the top, although they sometimes still leak out as rain. And then the bottom half of her body he stretched down and made into the land, which holds back the primordial waters below, which sometimes leak out as rivers and lakes and springs. And having done that, the greatest of all the gods, Marduk, created all of the rest of the world out of the dead corpse of his primordial mother. And that, boys and girls, is how the world began. According to the Babylonian creation story, the Enuma Elish. It's different from the one that Abby and Bill just read to us. But there are some similarities to our creation story. Both stories have this beginning where all that exists is formless primordial waters known as the deep. In fact, the Akkadian word Tiamat and the Hebrew word for the deep, Tehom, are the same word. So both these stories start out with this character of the deep primordial waters. And in our creation story, on the second day of creation, listen to it again. God says, let there be a dome or a vault and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. So, so both of these stories imagine the skies and the ground as holding back these primordial waters. So are the, there are these interesting similarities between these creation stories, and you would expect similarities because they developed in the same part of the world with cultural influences going back and forth. But then there are some kind of big differences in the stories. For example, in the Babylonian creation story, the wind of God violently murders the deep and creates the world out of her defiled corpse. Whereas in the Genesis story, the wind of God hovers over the deep. And it doesn't just hover over the deep. The verb that is translated hover, in other places this verb describes the way a mother eagle flutters over its babies in the nest. So it's almost as if the wind of God in this nurturing, loving, relational way pulsates over the deep, over the womb of the waters of chaos. And that is the beginning of the world. So it's interesting, this relationship between God and the deep, between God and the chaos. In the Babylonian story, the God dominates the deep. In Genesis, God creates in relationship with the deep, in relationship with the chaos and the formlessness. That stru struck me this week because there is certainly a lot of chaos and formlessness around us, and even in our own hearts, as we struggle with this 
turmoil of, of watching and reading about more black names, cis and trans of all genders being added to this long list of folks who have been threatened, brutalized and executed by the police or just by random people in the street or the park. And that chaos has moved people to disrupt the everyday workings of this nation, disrupting traffic, disrupting capitalism, leading to a chaotic backlash from law enforcement and a white supremacist president. Not to mention the chaos sitting right here in our bellies. There are the non-Black folks struggling right now to learn how to be allies, trying to manage this learned white fragility and sometimes asking for credit for being woke without having earned any trust. Black Americans are being asked to educate and comfort their non-Black acquaintances while dealing internally with generational trauma and threats to the lives of their children, which are plastered throughout every Facebook feed and news headline. It all feels very chaotic, like we're not sure where all of this is headed. In one moment, it's obvious the police and carceral, carceral state are built to harm Black Americans. And the next, you wonder what it would really mean to defund the police, all while your kids are asking you whether that police officer is there to protect them or to break into your home and murder them while they're trying to sleep. It's a confusing time. And there are some of us who want to win this time. We want to conquer the chaos, to obliterate the formlessness. We want to cancel 2020 and get out of this by sending in the military and dominating whatever is unpredictable and outside of our control. We want to tear gas, beat down, and stand over the body triumphant. And we want to hold up a Bible and proclaim that God is on our side. The only problem is that's the wrong God. The God of our tradition is a God who is actually hovering lovingly over this chaos. The God of our tradition is a God who does not need to conquer the chaos, but who actually treats the chaos as a womb that will birth a whole new world. Let's talk about another creation story, an old one. It's the story of the creation of this country. Even though it is myth. You know it by heart and we're likely taught to be loyal to it if you grew up in this nation. The creation story of this country goes something like this. The brave pilgrims came and had friendly and just meals and relationships with the indigenous people of this land. The founding fathers fought a righteous revolution and a perfect democracy was established with liberty and justice for all. We defeated slavery together in the Civil War, and soon-to-be white immigrants came here and found shelter in our cities. Martin Luther King made everyone equal, and here we are, a bastion and defender of freedom in the world. That's more or less our creation story, right? Does it sound familiar? Of course, most of us know the harm in that story the gaps, the misrepresentations, the lies. Most of us know that that story is really the creation myth of white supremacy in this land. But we are taught from a very young age in the United States that the creation of this nation is complete. That was how we were created. And now we are what we are, and that's what we are. And then God rested on the seventh day. And we can all take a breath and celebrate with fireworks and hot dogs next month. But I wonder about that. Are we at the end, looking back on the creation story of this nation, looking back on the creators of long ago? Is it the seventh day of rest and completion in this country? Some of you saw the Reverend Al Sharpton give the sermon at George Floyd's first memorial service this week. And Reverend Sharpton talked about time. His text was Ecclesiastes 3, to everything there is a time and a purpose and a season under the heavens. And he told a story about that one day 
of the year when time changes and time moves forward and about how he had an appointment on that day and he was late to his appointment because his watch was on the wrong time. And he said, there are people in this country, including its president, whose watches are simply on the wrong time. But he said, we have entered into a new time, a time when police accountability is going to be changed, a time when the government's relationship to all the people, especially Black Americans, has got to change. And some are just confused about the time. I wonder if we're confused about the time. What time is it in this country? Is it the seventh day of rest in this nation? Some people would say the revolution was won 200 years ago, but I wonder, I wonder if we've got our watches on the wrong time. I wonder if today we're seeing evidence that we are not on the seventh day of creation looking back on creation, but we are on the first day, that we are actually living in the deep right now. We are living in the chaos and the formlessness that in reality is a womb that will give birth to a new world. We were out on the New Haven streets with 5,000 other people on Friday for a march. I saw Dean there and I'm sure some of others were, were there or have been elsewhere in other crowds. It was amazing. There were throngs of people walking to the green from all corners of the city. And you just saw this huge mass marching, pulsating, fluttering off the green down Elm Street. And people just kept pouring in to replace them. And it took almost an hour for these quivering crowds with their signs waving and voices chanting in steady beats. It took almost an hour for everyone to pour out of the green in this wide moving band of life. It was amazing. It was the beginning when God's wind, God's sacred breath hovered, fluttered, pulsated lovingly over the deep. And God said, let there be a new world. It makes me wonder this exciting question, what creation story will be told about our nation in which today is not the last, but the first day of creation? And you know, one more thing I noticed about the creation story this week, and I got this from theologian Catherine Keller, that it's that God doesn't just make everything in the story. God separates the waters and stretches out the sky but then God says to what has been created, God says, let the waters bring forth life. Let the earth bring forth life. Be fruitful, all of you, and multiply and create and recreate and fill the earth. See, God could just murder everything that is complicated and rule as defiant dictator, making a world out of the mangled car carcass of the opposition. But that is not our God. Our God hovers over the deep, hovers and flutters over the chaos. Our God invites all that is, including you and me, to bring forth life, to be fruitful, to fill. We are terrifyingly essential in this story, and it is the first day. So this week, I want you to think of yourself not as someone who rests your hand on your heart and celebrates the creation of a nation that someone else made. No, each one of us is kneeling on the primordial waters between the deep and the pulsating breath of God. We are a potentiality that will and must bring forth life, plant the seeds of justice, bear the fruit of transformation, and fill the earth with the blueprints of liberation. May it be so. Amen. Katie is now going to lead us in God the Sculptor of the Mountains.
you katie did and you had your your hi thank you so much for playing piano mm -hmm. that was beautiful at this time we move in our service to a time of sharing joys and concerns sharing um moments of uh struggle and uh, celebration in our lives with one another and lifting lifting them up, them up to God um, through this community. And um, so I'll open things up. a moment now of silent prayer and perhaps there's something that you heard spoken that you want to lift up to God and perhaps there's something that is on your heart that is yet unnamed so let's take a moment now to to lift all of that up to God in silence together We pray to you, God, in the name of the one who taught us this prayer. Our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to um, take out your communion elements if you have them with you. And if you don't, that is okay as well. And we'll enter into our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And when they had finished eating their supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and passed it around to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood. It is a new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. I invite all of you in your homes to place your hands in a sign of blessing over your elements, if you have them, um, as an extension of, of my hands and as an extension of the hands of the church. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. 
make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. If you're able to hold up your bread or bread-like elements, this is the body of Christ, which is given for you. If you can hold up your juice or wine-like element, this is the blood of Christ given for you. Let us partake. And I know there are maybe some among us who were not able to have communion elements with you. And for all, of, for all of us, I offer this blessing, but especially for those who may not have elements with you. My sibling, may you know on this day, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, God's complete and steadfast grace, that no matter what you have done or what you have left undone, you will always be God's beloved child in whom God delights. Amen. Let us pray the prayer after communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As um, Yuyan heads back to Hong Kong, uh, we're so glad that she could offer th this one last song for us. And um, as she does that, uh, I would just say in this moment, we always do just remind folks that we, um, we are continuing to do our work as a church and we invite you to continue your um, giving and your contributing to this work. So. Um, you can still give to us online at fsumc.org, or you can mail checks to the church building. Um, and we are so thankful for all those who have been continuing their support for this community because it is so important to all of us. Um, and you, Yen, we thank you for all of that you've contributed to this community in the last year. Um, and thank you for leading us today in our final song this little light of mine. So let's sing together if you know how to sing this song. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Every word I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Every word I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Every word I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Until justice comes, I gotta let it shine. Until justice comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Until justice comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. 
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Thank you so much, Yuyan. Um, as we uh, end this time together, I would just remind you that right after the benediction, we'll have a moment of if there are any logistics or community sharing that needs to happen. Um, just for any needs that the community has, we'll have a moment for that. And then we'll go into our coffee hour break breakout room. So uh, we hope you'll stay to have some conversation with one another. And go now with this blessing. There is chaos and deep uh, in our souls, in the streets, all around the world. And I pray that you will all be able to find where the creation is, where God's spirit is hovering over the chaos and where you can participate in it. And may God bring you life may god make you a creator of life and fill you up so that you may fill the world with goodness and love amen, amen. thank you all hi i'm reverend vicki flippin pastor at first and summerfield united methodist church in new haven connecticut and we're so glad to have had you in worship today we would love to stay in touch with you to know who you are and to let you know what we're doing in our community during this time. Um, so we invite you to send an email to fsumcworship at gmail.com and we can't wait to hear from you. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe, be blessed, and let's continue to participate in all that God is doing in the world. Bye.